So, welcome to the new episode of uh, Shift Talking, and we're going to be just like everybody else and talk about the GT500. Again. Again. <laughs> yeah. One month hiatus, and then we're back talking about Ford. Again. Again. Yeah. Okay. No, but that's okay, because it's finally officially been... Confirmed? Show yeah. <laughs> Display. Displayed? Yeah, yeah. Displayed. but it's not no. the big hoopla that everybody was anticipating. Like, the marketing for Ford isn't really that good. It's never you know. Good. I stayed out though. You know what? The <laughs> the only part of the whole reveal thing that I saw was those fucking memes where the front bumper was like all swirled up. Oh so yeah. Somebody tagged me on it. They're like, "Oh, you should have called you oh, a detail." Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, those the paint jobs on that car was really bad. Yeah. It was really bad. I'm sure they rushed it. They probably took it to the coin operated car wash the night before, <laughs> used the brush and everything. <laughs> Just get it clean. Imagine. Uh, I do that. So what do we know about the car? What well, we know what it looks like. That's okay. It looks like what everybody didn't want it to look like. So, in my opinion. So I, I, I think I, I have a list of things okay. that I, I written <laughs> down. <laughs> so this is what. Uh, hey, that's, we, what you, that's what you know you're old. <laughs> well, you know you can. Talk about yeah, you know you gotta, you gotta write stuff down. You know that means I'm prepared. You know. I guess. You know. So, well, you know. This is called shift talking. Shit talking, so I'm prepared too. <laughs> Go ahead. So we know a few things. We know it has a lot of uh, intercoolers. It has six intercoolers. Oh, wow. So um, it's a little bit different from the 350 that we have now. Um, it's a little wider in the front. People think it's the same front end. It's not the same front end. You know, it's a little bit different. Yeah, because you have a little piece that comes out, right? Well, yeah, it's actually wider than the 350 by like 10 mils, I believe it is. Um, you know, it has a low profile Eaton, uh, supercharger, uh, 2.65 supercharger, same one that's, uh, in the, uh, ZL1. So it has the same supercharger. Um, it also has, um, you know, it has some things about it. Nothing, nothing too, uh, too big, you know, as far as the horsepower goes, no one knows the horsepower. The aerodynamics of it, you know, it has, uh, you know, active aero. It has uh, regular aero, and supposedly it has the most downforce of any production car out there right now. So, so it's got a 5.2 liter block with a 2.6 liter supercharger. Yes. Does that make it a 7.8 liter engine overall? Am I am I accurate in my math there, or am I stupid? Well, I I I, I wouldn't say I'm a motor guy, so I wouldn't really. No, but it's it's a lot of horsepower. Yeah, it's a lot of horsepower. You know, Eaton is uh, local. Oh, they are. Oh, right off of the uh, if you're if you're on the six hundred five, right where the six hundred five merges onto the sixty. Mm. Right oh, there, okay. right down that corner. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, it's Shelby. I mean, as far as the big news on it, um, I think everybody's waiting for the horsepower numbers. You know, they everybody's thinking it's going to be like low horsepower. Like, I mean, low horsepower is seven hundred horsepower. 720 horsepower, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think it's gonna be a lot more than that, you know, up <laughs> closer to, you know, upper, you know, 750, 770. You know, I even heard rumors of even getting close to 800 horsepower. I love that 700 is low for some people. Yeah, right. that's plenty of horsepower, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, but without, you, you put in the, you know, the drivetrain is the difference with the GT500 versus the GT350. That's the main difference, you know? So you have the horsepower and you have the auto transmission that is, uh, you know, dual clutch. Mm -hmm. So that that's where the money is. And, and then the carbon fiber, it has carbon fiber, you know, for the track pack. But let's talk about this thing that made the internet go bonkers. Let's talk about that turn dial, though. Oh my God. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Everybody's crying about that, you know? All the purists are crying about it. Well, even before you even get to the knob, they're crying that it's an auto, you know? But, yeah. you know, I mean, that's the way to go if you want to be fast on the track. Yeah. That's I mean, a that's a track-inspired car. It's sure. not necessarily... That's the purpose of it. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be necessarily just a drag car like the Demon. This car is for people that take their cars to the track. For sure. And well, wait, are the Demons automatic or stick? Automatic. I think they're automatic. Automatic, right? So... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's no secret that if you want to 
by by today's technology, oh, yeah. if you want to win fast, yeah, on the track, yeah. you get an automatic, For right? Sure. Dual clutch transmissions, things of that nature are designed to make these calculations faster than the human mind can tell your man to, to can tell your hand to shift, right? Yeah. But I think we already know that this car is going to be close to the six figures. I think that at that price point, they could have done a little bit more. I don't know research, maybe development, figuring out how to actually make it look like it belongs there, as opposed to making it look like an afterthought. Well, my, I my mean, problem uh, is that uh, it just looks weird. I'll tell you one thing. I obviously wash cars, and I drive a lot of fucking high-end cars. And it's fucking confusing when I get in there in the Aston Martin, or I get in the SLS AMG, and messing with all that stuff, it's like... You're just like, what the fuck? Or all these fucking BMW. buttons, dude. Yeah. All these buttons, like, <laughs> it's confusing, man. I shit yeah. you not. Like, the I8 I got in today, I'm like, what the fuck do I do? And it's, it's, like, called, it's called technology. <laughs> yeah, but it's just crazy because, like, you think about that Ford one, it's it's simple. And to me, as a as a person who really, I really don't give a shit about technology, it's cool to see the, the, the cool new stuff, the displays, the lighting, and all that stuff. But as a driver, if it's that easy just to turn it to drive, like, to me, that's good enough. Like, I don't need all that extra shit. I'd rather have the horsepower than anything else. But, like I said, that's my personal preference. When I get into cars sometimes and I'm supposed to move them, I'm just like, how the fuck do I do this? And why the hell do they have all these buttons? The AMG literally <coughs> has like a drive button, an R button. You've been in it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, what the fuck? It's cool, I guess, in the beginning. Like, it's something different, but I don't know, man. It's just, I don't think it's needed, you know? And maybe that's what Ford did. Maybe Ford said, you know what? Let's keep this simple, but we're gonna do the arrow like they did. Well, I think they, they put their money in the arrow. Yeah. They put their money in the drivetrain. So that's where the high price is gonna come from, yeah. you know? So all these, you know, trollers and, you know, purists, you know, a lot of hate from the GT350 guys, you know, that blew their money on the R, and then they're like, oh, I, you know, I can't afford it. But, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, if you wanna be fast, you, you know, you're either gonna go electric now, you know, your electric motors, hybrids, or automatic, you know? And fortunately, you know, the the, the manual shift is, is is dead, you know? So, you know, the, th the 350 guys with the 350s, you know, they should be happy with what they have and, and hold on to that car because it will be worth money down the road because uh, it's I a it's a dying transmission that yeah. will not be out there anymore. That's what I was gonna say. It's I think, very I think it will be worth something because it's still a driver's car. You know, when you think about getting into a car, and we talked about this before in another, another episode, the automatic versus stick. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about when you get into a stick shift car, like you're in control, you feel like it's 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 a car, you know, you're able to control it. A I'm so tired of hearing that. It, it's true though. <laughs> you, tell me, you're gonna tell me when you get into the little Fiat, you don't feel a little cooler driving stick shift? No, yeah, I don't feel, do. I, I have fun driving it, but I don't have nearly as much fun driving like well, I, I, I think I, I think with like so if, if you're using an automatic, so all, all the you know all the racing done is is done with autos. Yeah, you know? exactly. Paddle shifting, you know, no guys ain't out there slamming gears Sports no more. Car, like, They're not cars. slamming gears no more. So yeah, if I'm lucky enough to get one, you know, and you know, you guys want to slam your your manual shift against me and my 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 bot. 500 <laughs> then I'll, I'll i'll give you that that race you know you're not going to go faster than me through the gears you're not oh yeah that's but that's even on the track so on the track there's a lot of room for error you know if you're driving on the track double clutching you know uh you know uh but that's the whole that's the whole yeah you know, you know being a driver's car no it's system. fun but you do you can make those errors the reason, so the reason why you do go faster in an automatic but now is you're, because you're concentrating on speed. But now you're talking about faster versus, you know, slower. I don't know. Who I cares feel about like, faster versus slower? Okay, I'm talking about just genuinely enjoying driving this fucking car. No, I'm you, not enjoying the car is better with manual. I, I agree. I'm not saying that manual driving is not fun or makes it feel like you're in more control of your car. I think, and I, uh, this is just me, guys. I feel like there's a bigger bond between me and the Camaro because I have to trust that the computer knows what the fuck it's doing, right? It's making a quicker decision than what I could do in a manual because I've been driving manual for a few months now and I'm still nowhere near as comfortable as I would be in my Camaro. And like, I can't compare the Abarth to the Camaro because 
even though it's a V6, is, there is a big horsepower difference. My car is built for a track. The Fiat is built for the, you know, the road. But nonetheless, I feel like I'm more like a part of the Camaro because first of all, I built it. And second of all, like the computer does make those decisions, but I'm the one giving it gas. I'm the one, you know, braking. If I'm using the paddle shifters, you know, sure, but it's still computer making the, the gear changes and stuff. That's just, because, that's, just, that's just because you're not comfortable with the manual. With people that have been driving manuals their whole lives, it's it's second nature. It's like riding a bike. I get it. So, but people but, saying like you're not a real man or not a real oh, car driver. No, no, no one's saying that. I mean, no, you gotta no, be. I, but I'm talking about with the GT500, there's been, I've seen people like, oh, yeah. why is it automatic? Like, if you want to be the king of the fucking road, you're in an automatic. Just yeah. hands down. I just think there should I be agree. the option of having a stick shift yeah. too. <laughs> no, and, and, and it's because all three of you guys are manuals. Hey, here's the thing, though. <laughs> Let, let's just make something real clear here right now. Okay. No one is saying here that an automatic isn't faster. I think we all yeah, agree. Better. No, we, we all agree that it's faster. Better. But what we're saying it's is, and, and it might even be safer to, to even start a new category. Like, okay, you have a driver's uh, a driver's car, right? Mm -hmm. These are the cars that are going to come in a manual. Then you have a race car. These right. are the cars that are going to come in automatic. Right. And, and the GT500 is a race car, track car. Yes. It does not need to come in manual. But is it going to be driven on the street? Yes. Is For it going to sure. be driven by people in the streets normally? Yes. And is everybody going to put it on the racetrack? No. no. So shouldn't it have an option to become a manual? I disagree. No. I disagree. Sure you know why? Easy. Why? I'll tell you why. Because for them to put it you in... You know why? Because he's old and he's going to be tired. <laughs> I'm Carry on. That's the real answer. Go ahead. Give us That's your okay. bullshit. You're going to drive it too, hey, Max. You no You're going to drive it from the garage out to, to go ahead and, and make it look nice and pretty. <laughs> at least, so, at least so. I won't be confused on what to do. But... So Ford is smart. You know, if they come with two options, they're gonna have two transmissions. Okay, the why the 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 manual transmission is is not the. Let's start with this. The automatic transmission is superior to the to the manual. Now yes. So yes. Yes. so that's all there is to it. Why are they gonna give you two options? Also the pricing. The pricing is gonna be different for manual to have two different transmissions. I'll tell you right now, the 500 is not gonna come with the manual shift. Not Straight next up. year, yeah, it's it's not, not three happening. years from now, it's, no. not, it's not. It's because not they're gonna have two different price points. If you want the carbon fiber and you want the track package, you're gonna pay one price. You know if what? you want just the daily driver, not with the expensive wheels, not with the arrow, you're gonna have that package. And that's it, I, you know? I, I actually, now that I think about it, I agree because like, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I'm thinking of a normal Mustang not being in stick shift. A normal Mustang isn't this, the, the GT500, you're right. It's a total different car mm -hmm. that belongs to, belongs on the track. And it's gonna be used most, is it gonna be used on the street? Yeah, but mostly it's gonna be people that aren't even gonna fucking drive their They're car. either gonna have, they're you're gonna garage right. queen it, or they're gonna drive it so, on the track. So the next- More than likely, they're gonna garage queen yeah, it. Yeah, right. you know? you're right. Exactly. Makes sense, yeah. I, I get it now, makes sense now. That I processed it in my head. I'm a little slow. But I, I think I, I think with the you know everybody talking you know crap about the car, you know everybody talks crap about the new thing, you know whether it's a GT500, whether it's a Demon mm -hmm. or a Red Eye or the Camaro or the the Corvette. Everybody's gonna talk. But once these cars get bought and they start dry, you start seeing them on the street, then you will appreciate what you see in front of you. Marley the other day made an interesting comment to me about the GT500 and she was telling me that, you know, obviously within the Camaro community, they have also been resharing the picture and stuff in, in the news. And she was telling me that she's seen a ton of the Camaro people actually like the GT500. Yeah, I, I, okay, so well, because I'm a Camaro person, not, I don't think it's Camaro just people that. jumped on the bandwagon, Chevy people jumped on the bandwagon because they're supercharged. Oh. They're 650 plus, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mustang. <laughs> To drive a Mustang, you have to be a Mustang fanboy, you know, or a Shelby guy to be a must, you know, Shelby fanboy, because you're driving a car that, uh, power-wise, is subpar compared to Chevy or Mopar, because everybody has a supercharger, you know, Mustangs and Shelbys they don't come with superchargers. 
as of now. I th no, I think what it is is that this this like last lineup of all the new muscle cars that came out, which would be the Z01, the Red Eye, and then the the now the GT500. I think the GT500 out of everybody just hit it out of the park. Like it is, it looks beautiful. I stayed up super late to watch the reveal. This is the first. I'm saying it on camera. This is the first Ford vehicle that I would go buy. I freaking love the look of the car. It Hold sounds on, it still looks the amazing. same as the other picture that was leaked and nobody liked it. No, so how do you like it now? I like it now. Like now that I've actually seen it and like I'm you get the pamphlet and you're like you're seeing everything about it compared to all the other cars that have come out. This is the one that hit it out of the park. It has character. Amazing. It has character. Yep. It sounds freaking amazing it sounds like a freaking semi truck like it, it sounds really good <coughs> z01 le it's a z01 with a one le package that's yeah. all it is it's nothing yeah. special the red eye it's a detuned you know demon like yeah. it's nothing special but this is like oh huh, like you said it. <laughs> i like that that was a good rap